Okay, now it should be back. Uh, so, oh gosh, is it no data to display? What? Okay, now it should be back. After like trying to get the, the a Wi-Fi outage, trying to get the stream back. After a Wi-Fi outage, trying to get the stream back, and then uh, once I do, my computer decides to get to do a forced shut, do like a a shutdown to download updates or something like that, and it's just, and I'm just like, oh god, why now? If it sounds like I'm defeated and sad, that's because I really am. If you hear button pressing, that's because I'm playing a game. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I feel defeated. Like, uh, I'm less excited about doing this episode of uh, this whole ep this whole episode now that, uh, considering all that's happened, I feel I'm considerably less excited. And now McAfee wants to do a scan. Oh my god. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Anyways, I was saying, like, uh, if these are really KISS demos, they might have Paul or Gene or Eric, Paul Stanley, Gene Simmons, or Eric Carr on them. And uh, and maybe like, Eric Carr's estate doesn't want something with Eric Carr's drumming on it released without their permission. Or maybe they... Or maybe they don't want, uh, or maybe they don't want, uh, or maybe Paul and Gene don't want something that features their vocals or guitar or bass playing released without their permission. You know? It's a real gray area here. And now... They're telling me Flash Player's been disabled because they might have a virus. Oh, oh, no, oh, no, oh. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just sad about this whole ordeal. So, uh, um, okay. So, so a lot of people don't realize there's a lot of hurdles with this, but. And if, again, he's saying, like, he wants to get outtakes from, like, the Revenge Sessions, an album he didn't even play on. Outtakes from the Lick It Up Sessions, the the Creatures of the Night Sessions, and this would, this would entail that he'd have to jump through hurdles, like, get, he'd have to go through, like, copyright hurdles and everything, it's... It's a lot of it's a lot more effort than a lot of people really think. There's not getting notifications at this time. I'm I'm sorry. Oh gosh. Oh. So this is a lot more hurdles than what Vinny might be willing to put in, and a lot of people need to realize that. Mm. So, Okay, so, sorry. Another interruption. Ugh. Everything just dead center interrupting this today. 
Oh. Oh. Okay. So you know, let's stop talking about the Vinnie Vincent box set. I've been, I'm, I, I got nothing more to add to the situation, especially now in my current state of mood. Well, I let me. I need to try and take this in a positive direction. Okay. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm making sure to read the chat this time. Normally, I don't read the chat because I'm too busy checking on uh, the stream settings and everything. But I, I got the chat pulled up next to me. Who has more hurdles, Vinny Vincent getting this collection or you getting your live stream working? You know what? I'm starting to think at this point it's me getting my live stream working. Like, sure, Vinny Vincent's got to fight Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons in legal trouble. And Eric Carr's estate in legal battles. And maybe even Gary Shea and Jimmy Waldo. But, like, this is just tick. Wi-Fi outage, brothers, like my dang brother walking in, <laughs> the computer force shutdown updates, the McAfee scan, email notifications, everything just to try. Okay, with no more hurdles, hopefully we'll get into this. Okay, so, uh, you know, I might as well talk about like the other talking point I really planned out for this, the stink bomber. So, uh, one day people started calling me the stink bombers for one day only. And the reason why is because at summer high, so when I was 12, no, no, no I, I was 11. Okay, starting, okay, so this is a more deep sea that when I was a young kid, like I'm talking seven or eight years old, I had uh, rampant gastrointestinal problems. It got to a point where uh, it was uh, seriously, uh, it got to the point, It would, these were mostly just like I'd get regular stomach bugs and I'd have, like, the most noxious of gas when I'd get these. But then it got to a point where these were becoming, like, a more regular occurrence. Like, it would it'd happen, like, a week. It'd be, the gas would become a weekly thing and followed by a gross, a gross uh, diarrhea, for lack of a better word. Eric McCright's No More Hurdles Tour. <laughs> so it'd get to a point where... Uh, It'd get to a point where uh, I'd have like a after like bad gas for a little while or stomach problems and then diarrhea, and then I'm done. Like I feel much better. It's not a sickness thing. It's actually just a. Uh, it's actually just. Um, it's not a sickness thing. It's more just like a uh, intestinal thing, and uh, at the, and when I was when I was eleven. Uh, I remember this day well because I was had a really awesome time playing WarioWare DIY in the back of my stepdad's truck, which my mom was driving, uh, to get near there. I went to the doctor's office to get an ultrasound because uh, the do uh, my doctor had noticed uh, my mom had complained to my do to my doctor about a a gas problem I was having, like with this, and he told me to go to a uh, the central like hospital in. Uh, this like the the my my town's nearest like major hospital, and so I did. We did just that. We went went there and uh, tr tried to get a handle on uh like what see what was basically make my 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 gut tick. Now like my dad had gastrointestinal issues too. Part of it's a hereditary thing. My grandpa has them bad. My dad has them not as bad. Sometimes they're like, ah, son, so-and-so gave me rot gut. Oh, oh, where's my antacid tablets? And so eventually, uh, oh, so they, they diagnosed me with, uh, they diagnosed me with GERD and like, and uh, some other, and some other gastrointestinal related problems. I was embarrassed about this because this was a rare. I went. I was eleven years old. I was a kid. This is a rare occurrence in a kid. This is common in old people. My grandpa had no. This all these gastrointestinal problems I had were like were brought on by the. Oh, it's even worse that like these got despite the fact that this wasn't related to GERD, GERD is an un, unrelated gastrointestinal issue I had. These got the reputation of GERD farts, and more famously, the the burps that would ensue. The GERD burps. 
as my brothers had coined the term. And uh, despite that, again, unrelated to GERD. And so here we are. We're talking about GERD. GERD and everything like that. Like, it's a serious thing. And when I tell, uh, tell them, and then uh, yeah, at Summer Heights, this day camp I used to go to, you know, I'm having a good time. I'm playing, I'm building Mega Man bosses out of Legos. I'm having a real good time. And then it happens. Uh, I have, I get, my stomach starts hurting. I'm like, oh, and I'm with my friends, Garrett, Grant, and Nate. And we're all, and we're all there building stuff out of Legos or, I don't know if Nate is. I think Nate might have been doing something else. And then I... Oh, God. Oh, oh this, is, this is a painful memory I'm bringing back here. So then I... I've, again, the GERD fart too and burps were scary because you wouldn't hear them. You wouldn't hear them. They just come. And then they... They were the worst smelling, like, gas you've ever smelt. And so... And so it get to a point where uh, I, I got to a point where I, I eventually I let one out. And I'm like, oh, maybe maybe no one. Will not. And then I let another one out. And this one a little longer. I'm like, oh, you know, I got I got to go to the bathroom and let the rest of these out before I seriously hurt people. And then I walk and I make the mistake while I'm walking out. I walk normally you're supposed to like to like, okay, can I use the bath? I'm gonna go use the bathroom. Or can I use the bathroom? To teach it to like the class teacher because teacher because uh, they, they're supposed to know where you are at all times. This is a safety thing, you know. I get it. Or like when you want to go drink some water, you tell them. But uh, I just walked out of there and I made the mistake of looking back and seeing like uh, uh, looking back. And then I uh, as I'm walking out, and I see Garrett with the face of like pure disgust and horror. And this is burned in my head because he's a good friend of mine, and just I hurt him so bad. Through just that alone. And it's just the, it's like, oh, I, his face was just like, oh. That's why he's so much sound he made, too. It just got so bad. Oh my gosh. So then he's, and so then I, I walk out. And then I, I'm in there for a few minutes and I walk out. And uh, the teacher for the class, Mr. Cameron, uh, during uh, that year, was very absent. He was absent through most of it. I remember, so uh, uh, two, uh, two of the helpers in that class, Matana and Miles, had to step up. And uh, Matana was like, uh, well, was, was standing there, uh, like with her hands on her hips, very aggressively looking at me. She goes, <laughs> oh. <laughs> She, uh, Matana, standing there looking at looking at me very aggressively as I walk out of the bathroom in the class, and the other class is looking at me all very judgmentally, like I had hurt them or done something so personal. And then she goes, "Hey, Eric, you wash your hands? Eric, you wash your hands?" And I'm like, "Uh, uh, yes. Go wash your hands." I'm like, "Oh, okay." And I walk in, and I just he goes, "What'd you do?" Did you, did you? I, um, I I, I didn't want to. Again, I was very embarrassed because these stomach problems were... I didn't think anyone would believe me. These stomach problems I were having were, were not common in an 11-year-old boy. And so I just nervously go, um... Well... Uh... You see, I... Um... And then she's like, spit it out. I'm like, uh, I started to, uh, and this was a Monday. And on Mondays, I would go from my mom's house to my grandparents' house to stay the night because they lived closer to where the summer camp was. So they'd drive me there and back every day. And uh, so I'm like, uh, my mom cooked chili last night and the beans were just, you know, really riled me up. And Matana looks at me with a look of just disappointment. And she's just like, ugh. Go wash your hands again. So I wash my hands for a third time. And like everyone in the class starts razzing me on how bad that smelled. Like they, they, Garrett, even my friends Garrett and Nate Grant, they all talk Garrett is <laughs> Garrett, I said earlier, Garrett's face was one of abject horror. And so Garrett looks at me and goes, Eric, what happened? I'm like, uh, like that chili? Oh, Eric, I smelled that. I was, I was, I was at ground zero. And I'm, like, I'm sorry. I'm real sorry, everyone. Oh. Oh, it was just. 
<laughs> and they called me the stink bomber for the rest of the day. And then ne the next day, it's and then the next week, Matana's teaching the class because Mr. Cameron's uh, absent. And she looks at me and says, All right, everyone, before we get started, Eric, did you have chili last night? And I'm like, um, n no. And she's like, okay, good, now let's get started. And I had a reputation as a stink bomber for the rest of that summer. That's, it, thankfully, most people seem to have forgotten about it. Probably want to bury it from their memories, because, like, Garrett and I worked there a few, worked there, like, th three years in a row, and it was a cool experience. Uh, two years in a row, my bad. And, uh, he didn't seem to, he didn't seem to remember it at all. Like, he never brought it up, like, the stink bomber was never mentioned. And, oh, boy. To shed that, or leave that behind me. And that was actually, like, the last, uh, after that, I, the, uh, big gastrointestinal, uh, gross GERD burps, GERD farts, and my brothers called them, you know. They still, they winded down, and now I don't really have those anymore. On occasion, like, I had one, of, like, uh, maybe, I get them on, like, an annual, I get them, like, annually now. It's like an annual thing, and normally I'm just home and I'm alone when I do. I'm home and I'm alone, no one's around me when I do it, so... Everyone's normally safe. Crisis averted. Kind of, I think, and I hope. Ugh. <sighs> that was a good... I, 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 that was a good summer, too, but that's just... A stain on my on that summer that will just never w wash out. Like every time I think of that awesome summer, just that's associated with it. I seriously, I I I, I miss going to summer heights. At both working there and as a, both as a worker and as a camper, but I do not miss like uh, how I just. Uh, I don't miss the feeling of like, uh, you know, even there as well. I had a big feeling like me against a lot of me against most everyone else. I've oh, I, I can't. I've never been in like a big group environment where I didn't think that. Yeah, like I went to a Lutheran church camp a few summers in a row called Luther Homa. I had a shirt that like kicking up my Luther homies. That, and uh, my brothers like to make fun of that shirt. My mom thought it was kind of funny. My brothers like to make fun of that shirt I have. But, uh, anyways, uh, anyways, at Luther Homa, uh, in 2016 in particular, there is this douchebag, I say this full, like, I mean, I mean it, this douchebag who called himself Like a Hoss, I tried every, I tried so hard to get his first name, I could never remember his first name, and he'd never tell me when I asked him to remember it. He was a douchebag, and he was obnoxious, and so I tried to be obnoxious back to him in return, and it only made him, and, it, and rather, uh, and that was just my retaliation, like, you know, give the guy a taste of his own medicine. But this guy's re in response to, m m he, th this, gu this guy's response to, that was uh, to get way too uh, angry. His response was to just to get way too angry. And he, he's an irritable, and he was a douche, dude. There's a, a chubby guy, there's this, uh, and then there's this, fat, uh, f f heavier person, uh, I don't remember his name, it was, it was like Darren or something like that, I think, it started with a D if I recall, and, uh, he's, uh, and he was a real judgmental jerk, so, and he, uh, like, I got back from mountain biking, and on mountain biking this year, we, we went to a different place, because the other place we used to mountain, that apparently the old, older, uh, group, cabin groups, mountain bike was, uh, good closed down. And, uh, now most people didn't know about it. So we went to a new place that was just in Arkansas. It was around like Lincoln Lake or something like that. And we, it was a seven mile bike ride. We went the, se there was like a, uh, first there was like a one mile path, like a one or two mile path and a seven mile path. The seven mile path was so rocky. We couldn't even bike it. We couldn't even like fully bike it. There's only like two or three stretches where I actually got to bike. Most of it was just like us walking or trudging our bikes along. And I was, 
And I was a, I'm not a physically, I'm not a very physically fit person. That's so why I'm struggling out there in the summer heat and like hundred something degree weather. <laughs> and then the, this cabin counselor, CB, is behind me. when we were like far behind everyone else. And then uh, Pika, named that because she loves Pikachu. That's her nickname. Uh, was like, was, uh, what was like, wait, guys, where's CB and Eric? And... <laughs> Then, uh, and then this, uh, this, uh, guy named, his name was Tony. Him and I were friends there. But he went by, but he told me to call him Fabio. And so I just called him Fabio the entire time. I knew him. Uh, goes out and looks for me. And he goes, and he's like, then he finds me. And, uh, I'm, and then I've lose control of my bike. And then I'm about to fall. And then Fabio, like, tells me, reminds me, like, Fabio reminds me how to use the brakes. And I stop and he grabs my, and he grabs, like, uh, my hand, and uh, uh, right when I'm about to fall off a cliff, so right now I'm next to a cliff, I could have potentially fallen and died or something. And so Fabio's like, I saved your life, Eric. And so Fabio and I became friends just in the grounds of, like, I just, like, okay, fine, you saved my life. I just lived with the fact, like, okay, he wants to think that I, he didn't, you know, he very well might have done that, so I'll go with it. And uh, that was a hard mountain biking experience. And then... uh. Red Sky, the camp owner, is like, oh man, that was that, that seemed tough. We should invest in getting all the uh, all the all the campers who mountain bike Camelback water bottles. And if you don't know what Camelback is, they're like these elite spill-proof water bottles that hold a lot of water. I uh, I have a Luther Homa branded one I actually got from Camp Luther Homa. So, anyways, I. Uh, So anyways, we go, the, uh, Fabio, CB, and I, we're all going uh, down this road. We'll just finally, we get to a part where we can actually mountain bike. We're near the end, and we finish, and it's so nice. And we get our canteen, which is like two small candy bars and a soda. And I get Fabio's like, hey, you should give me one of yours because I saved your life. And, you know, I'm like, you know what? Yeah, fine. You seem like a nice guy. Sure. And then him and I, that's how that was the birth of a friendship that lasted literal days. <laughs> Only lasted days because we never saw each other again. But I go back there and we're all and like after doing like all our uh, all our option things here, uh, he's like, "Oh, how was the mountain biking this year? I didn't get go this year because I wanted to do something I hadn't done before." I mean, it was fine. It was really hard though. And he's like, "Oh, maybe for you, you out of shape loser." Well, like last year we went around the trail. We went around the trail three times. And I'm like, "Okay, clearly this guy doesn't." I tried telling him we went to Lincoln Lake. I think you can probably look this up. Let me look this up. Let me look this up real quick. Lincoln Lake, Arkansas. Yeah, that's the exact lake. Oh, yep, found it. Okay, so I tried telling him we went around Lincoln Lake, and he didn't. Bl and he thinks I'm trying to make an excuse or something. And he thinks I'm trying to, he just thinks I'm not making an excuse. Like, I'm trying to make, oh, but no, we went, we went to Lincoln Lake, and he's like, oh, we went, like, don't go lie to me, okay? You're in a church camp. You shouldn't lie in a church camp, okay? We went around the trail three times last year, and, and you're just out of shape and couldn't take it, okay? Just admit it. And I asked him to, uh, I asked him, like, ask ask Fabio, and he didn't, <laughs> again, I never figured out his real name was Tony until after the camp had ended, and so he's like, and I'm like there's no camper who goes here by the name of Fabio, you're just lying, and yeah, that really didn't help my case here, and that really didn't help my case here, and so he just looked at, he just looked at me as an unathletic shrimp the whole time, and I felt, and I just, oh. He's determined to just make me feel like a real piece of crap. I I loved go I loved going to Luther Homa, but 2016 was by far the worst summer I had had at Luther Homa. Oh. Just uh. When I got back from my first year at Luther Homa, I remember I bought this shirt that said kicking with my Luther homies. That's not the 
That's not the one I mentioned earlier. I, that that I, that's a different one that says the exact same thing. Uh, the one the kick on my Luther army shirt I got then was red. It's it, I quickly grew out of it after like a, two years. The yellow one I still have. I don't want mom to get my mom to get rid of it when I grow out of it because I I really like that shirt and I'd at least like to have it like a keepsake of my time there. So I showed it to my grandma and then uh I showed it to my grandma who was there to pick me up after the camp. And he's like, Oh cool guys and then uh she goes we we're leave about to go and then she goes, Okay, Eric, tell your homies goodbye. And the way she said oh, homies, you know, I just, it wasn't like, oh, I'm dying of embarrassment moment, but that was an embarrassing moment. Just like the way, tell, the way she said it, very loud. I love my grandma. I love my grandma a lot. She's such a nice person. <laughs> Reiterate, she's usually a nice person. But some moments like that just so last summer, uh, the summer because of the pandemic, the summer heights camp didn't happen, so I didn't get to work there. So my grandpa offered me an alternative instead, where instead of normally uh, during the summer heights season. For, oh gosh, uh, how old was I? And I was 15. So for six years straight, and yeah, six years straight, I'd go over to my grandparents for the summer. I'd stay for a, I'd stay for five weekdays for five, five weekdays of five weeks. I'd stay for five weekdays of five weeks. And then I'd come back home on the weekends. And then in 2019, uh, they had me stay a few weekends to help them with stuff, which is nice. And uh, so 2020, my grandpa offered me an alternate, an, a, a alternate solution where instead I come over for like two or three days a week. I stay, uh, I had, and I help him with the yard. And this plan was interrupted by the fact that. Uh, he had like bowel bleeding or something like that, and uh, this is kind of gross. This is like very. This is this is a very vulgar. I haven't said any. I don't think I've said any swear words on the stream yet. This is very vulgar. So, anyways, uh, for like three week, three or four weeks, and I'm going over there and helping, working and. His health, and I get to see during this. I get doing this. I get to see like his health decline gradually as I'm, as I'm working. Like uh, every week I come over, is he's doing worse and worse until his, until eventually he has to go to the hospital. He's he's doing fine as of now. He's doing relatively fine as of now. But apparently at the time his kidneys were only functioning at five percent, and he just wasn't healthy. And he had a lot of internal bleeding going on, and. I had to help him up. He had sat, he had, I had to help him up and I had to help him balance and everything. And he was, had a hard time driving a little bit. And I and eventually, just after the hospital, we started shaving back up. And I came over like one or two weeks after uh, after that. And so I stay. I, I I this last like five or six weeks. And that was the time where I really where I really just truly that summer I truly discovered my musical tastes. That summer, I've gotten. That's when I discovered my favorite bands that are still my favorite bands now. Some of my favorite artists, some of my favorite genres. You know, that that was a true summer of musical discovery for me. And all I listened to all this while I was working. I specifically remember listening, like really loving the super group called HSAS, which is Sammy Hagar, Neil Sean, like two set, two famous set at the time session players in a band. I, I'm, I, I haven't listened to the album in a while. I, I, th I think September was the last time I listened to it. I remember liking that a lot. Anyways, I'm getting getting carried away. So that was nice. That was a real nice. Uh, that was a real nice experience last summer getting to do that. And then in uh, January, uh, 
I'm uh, January. If, yeah, January I come over and I help, and that's when I just listened to Gamma Ray for the first time, by the way, because I liked Halloween and I liked cut the Kai Hansen pen song, so I thought Kai Hansen's own band would probably be really badass. Oh, oh there we go. First curse word of the stream, I think. I thought his Kai Hansen's own band would be pretty cool, and so uh, I listened to it, and it is. But Gamma Ray is one of my favorite bands. Anyways, uh, I will come over there and I work and pick up sticks and stuff, and it's fun. It all goes pretty good. And then, uh, and I had a good weekend with my with my brothers afterwards. And then, uh, in March, I'm asked to come over, either March or April, late March, early April, and I'm I'm asked to come over and help again. And you know that's fine. It's the spring. There's more short. There's more yard work that they need me to do. And so they take me and my brother out to Freddy's. And my grandma goes up to me and, and goes, You can't sleep on the guest room bed. Which has a really comfy mattress. My dad spent hundreds of dollars on it. It's a really nice mattress. I'm like, oh, why not? And she goes, I went to go get my clothes out and organize them. And see what to give away, what to keep. And he's explaining. And he goes, and I just... I can't get them. I can't. Like, no, you wouldn't know where anything goes. We can't get them off there. She was so determined to not mess with it, to not get the clothes off the bed. And I'm like, okay, fine. So I'll just sleep on the couch in there. And I had a and I have fond memories of watching the uh, Chris, the Christian Weston Chandler Sonichu docu series on that couch in there while pirating Japanese heavy metal bands like Shoya and Kanta. Whose music is who? Uh, Kanta, at least, like their, their Kanta, is at least, like none of their albums are available for purchase in America, to my knowledge. And show you their classic albums you can't buy digitally through legal means, anyways. So, mm. oh, speaking of which, reminds me need to check something real quick. I, I'll, I'll don't worry, I'll keep doing this for me while I'm doing this. So. Mm. I just forgot what was. Oh yeah. So, anyways. So, anyways, here. Uh, I'm I'm staying over, and I'm on. I'm sitting. This is a. I'm. I go over again. Uh, like in. I go over again in May. Go over again in. Uh, or one time in May, I listen to a lot of Quiet Riot. Real great experience. Listen to all that Quiet Riot. Anyways, uh, yeah, I was doing all that when I should have been sleeping. So, so here I am. I'm, I'm, I, it's July now, and I'm still sleeping on the couch in the fireplace room, which I nicknamed the sweat couch because I'd sweat in my sleep heavily on it and wake up a little wet. Then I'd I would I'd come back in from working, and I'd all sweaty, and I'd lay on it until they'd ask me to uh, do something else, or it's time to go eat. And while like I meet coming over frequently during like especially June and July, well that was kind of well that was nice, you know. It just didn't have the same mat. Twenty twenty was just a magic. That was just a magical summer for me. You know, summer twenty twenty. 2019, 2018, 2017. Four back-to-back -back awesome summers. And, you know, this summer has just been kind of eh. Meh. You know, like, it's not a bad summer, but it, it's not a bad summer. I, I turned 18 this summer. I got a lot of awesome presents this summer. You know, there's a lot to be happy about this summer. I got an anthem album for my birthday this summer. You know, there's a lot to be happy about. But on the other hand, it's also like, uh oh, yeah, nothing. You know, it's like, man, this hasn't been a. There's nothing that's happened to make this like an amazing summer. Graduation, nah. You know, like graduation must be like the biggest day of my life. But I got pulled into the bathroom by the janitor who saw me in, in there, and uh, he lectured me on like what I should do with my, on like the importance of graduating. And it was kind of a nice thing for him to do. Like I, like I was the only person he did this to, at least to my knowledge. It was just me and him alone in the bathroom, and he's like, a, and he just like talking to me about. Like, this is the biggest day of my life. Shouldn't squander it and everything. 
I've gotten off topic. So, so then it's it's uh it's September August. My bad, it's August, and my dad is coming over to uh to uh, take my grandfather to a family reunion up in Iowa. And I, I haven't seen, like, any of my family who lives up in Iowa. Uh, and at the time, I hadn't seen them in, uh, like, 16 years. I was, a to I was a toddler who probably couldn't even speak full sentences but by the time I first saw them. Uh, by, by the time I last saw them. So, so we go over to we go over to my grandparents' house. My yeah, and my dad, dad tells my grandfather he wants to stay there, and my grandfather and my grandfather says he's going to take the uh, he's going to take the he's going to order my grandmother to take the clothes off the bed. Finally, after they had been there for like four or five months. Yeah, about five months would be accurate. And maybe even six because I wasn't there in February. I wasn't at the house at their house in February. I don't know if it happened there. I don't know if they if they were there in February. I didn't visit at all during February. And uh, and then I get there, and the bed's been up, and I'm like, whoa. And the bathroom, which she had barred anyone aside from herself from using, free access to it. That bath, that guest room bathroom is like an old friend that's always there for me. It's, 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 it was always one of the constants in my life I could always count on. That bathroom is like a, that bathroom is like a, the, the old trusty friend who never let me down. I remember they were, they were initially going to move, and they made, like, a secret plan to not move, yet hide it from my grandpa or something like that. But when they were, like, full-on planning to move away, my brother joked, like, oh, no, where's where's Eric going to poop now? I don't, know, I don't remember which one. <laughs> Mom's in here, Bob's in here. And I, I, I don't know. I then I came back and I'm like, all oh, this already stuff on the pink room bed, uh, pink room guest room bed. Now there's already stuff on there. And I came back like uh, later in September to help them do something. And then I came back a uh, yesterday with my brother, with uh, my middle brother, Alex, to uh, in order to help uh, move, in order to help uh, lay down some sod, and. I noticed like she has a, and I noticed like she has all the clothes on a table in the, uh, in the hallway. And you know what? That's much more, that's much preferable. Just have them all in the bed. She keeps saying she's going to go through them. And that's why she always like has them on the bed. But if you're going to go through them, don't just leave them on the bed. Actually go through them. Don't just set them out there on the bed. Like just put them in a trash, if, if you're just going to leave them there on the bed for months at a time, then just put them in trash bags. Like, buy, put them in black trash bags and just, like, leave them in the closet or something. I'm getting a message. Oh. It's a virus birthday today. Nice. Just real. My brother just sent me a thing saying it's Elvira's birthday. Right. Yeah.
So I started taking a master class. Anyways, now that I'm done with this fun message. I started taking a master class on drumming that's hosted by the queen of percussion herself, Sheila E. And it's uh, it's a, it's really informative. And ever since then, I've been drumming with my hands on basically any every surface to whatever, to the beat of whatever song I'm listening to. And it's driving everyone crazy. Like everyone's like, oh, everyone's like, Eric, stop it. But they can't stop me. Here's something a lot of people don't like. It's when, uh, something a lot of people don't like that, uh, Actually, that I uh, that I actually find kind of interesting. It is a music thing. So a lot of times, this has been happening a lot in the, since, since in the 21st century, or at least more than it should. A band will have a split with like their singer or founding some founding member or member of great importance to the band, and then it'll just go on without them. Or won't let him back in the band for one reason or another. And and then this usually leads to uh, this usually leads to like a version of the band like featuring so-and-so member that was fired like Asia featuring John Payne who was their long-standing vocalist for 14 years before the original lineup reunited or Asia feature or like a or um, another example would be something like uh, Jeff Tate's Queensryche which is Queen uh, Jeff Tate left Queensryche over a money dispute And then uh, another example, another good example would be uh, KK's priest, KK Downing was. They wouldn't let KK Downing back into Judas Priest, so he decided to make his own version of the band. And um, more examples of this. More examples of this. I know. I'm just drawing a blank here. So, this is something a lot of people don't like. In fact, the guy even did, I even saw like a guy do a rant about K.K. Downing's priest. But, you know, I actually thought, like, I've actually heard the, like, the, the, the new single, which is called uh, Hellfire, the, like, the first single, which is called Hellfire Thunderbolt. I know, very metal name. And, uh, Damn, the song just rips. This is, this is a really awesome song. The guy's like, I don't like it when, like, Jeff Tate's Queen's Rock and all this, whatever, bands of, uh, try and mem found members of bands try and continue without uh, original members and the thing. The guy was basically just complaining. Yeah, basically just complaining. And, uh... They're like, dude, are you seriously complaining about, like, having two awesome Judas Priests? It's absolutely ridiculous. And then it got to a... It just... Some of these people's unnecessary, like unnatural, just hatred for these sort of things. It just, and now the heat that some of these people will get just really baffles me.
Better than Dare Wimpy Kid book. Pretty good, but you know, reading it made me miss how uh, the books used to end with like, oh, I'm out of paper. I guess this is the end. I kind of missed that. You know, like the end in big bold letters. I missed that. I, I, I kind of long for that now. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm in a better mood now since like the beginning of this, but it's just, it's just I'm still I still feel kind of defeated over that whole whole thing. It's just like man, I finally get to start it now. It's like well, now what? And also the fact that like this time my attention is divided a little bit between this and Wario's Pit Cross. No, I didn't miss, I didn't misspeak. I said Wario's Pit Cross. I'm playing Wario's Pit Cross. You know what? It's like all the Mario Pit Cross games are awesome, and Nintendo needs to make a new one, or at least outside of Japan. I would pay for that. What's up, Niagara? Buffalo side is dead. I didn't even see these. What is he in Buffalo side is dead? Is it? Like I'm a little confused here. What, what, what is Buffalo side? Oh, okay. My one current viewer is back. Okay, good. Now I can mention. Now I can bring up again, once again, what does Buffalo Side is dead mean? Now, I sent a uh, request to uh, that metal station, an online radio station focused on hard rock and heavy metal, for a uh, position as a uh, as a DJ there. Because I heard they're hiring DJs. I'm waiting to uh, waiting to hear back from them to see if uh, see if I fit the bill. But uh, I'm really excited to do that. I, I got this idea for a show about uh, where I just focus on Japanese heavy metal, and uh, I think that'd be kind of cool. There's no shows in there like that. Gaming. want to get this out there there's a uh i just want to get this out there. there's a delay between uh there's a delay between the uh stream itself and uh there's a delay between the stream itself and uh like what i uh, like when it hits you when the viewer sees it and from like what i say the delay is i think close to 10 seconds i'm gonna open up a new window here I said open up a new window. Hold on a second. I want to show you guys and let me see if I can open a new window here.
Oh, that's right. He did a like a new conversation thing with the Steve Hackett. I mean, oh, and so let me just take, just get taking a minute to set it up here. This is a new, I'm breaking new ground here for this channel. This is uh, something I hadn't really, okay. Eh. Uh, how do I? Did, who's, who keeps any messages you're on streaming? Okay, let's, uh... Well, guys, it should only take me... So if you guys want to see the master at work, let me just pull this up here. This will be the good. This will be the perfect thing to put on while I use the bathroom. Let me. Uh, well, I, I gotta. I gotta use. The, I gotta use the bathroom. I'm going for a little while. I drank a lot of water today. Seriously, I was outside in the hot sun, weed eating, and I just drank, drank a lots of water. I drank maybe about uh, how much is a gallon? I drank maybe like forty percent of it. Like. 40% of a gallon now that I was outside working. Dang, it, it's been hot today. Okay. Uh, window capture. Uh, I guess we're going to do window capture. Yep. All right, guys, I'm going to put on uh, Roger Dean painting while I use the bathroom. Okay. Hope you guys enjoy this. Spending as much time today subtracting as adding. For this kind of painting, do you create a physical sketch ahead of time, or do you allow oh, the? Sorry. Do you do a sketch first, or do you allow the painting to direct your work? To a degree, to a very large degree. But I, I, I played around with a sketch, which is not for the painting, it's just, okay, this is how it might be. But that's just a starting point. Having said it's just a starting point, this does sort of reflect that. And I wasn't sure whether I'd have it on the left or right, so I did two versions. Anything good? So, a, a small sketch. By the way, that sketch was quite tiny, about this big, and I, I blew it up when I scanned it. Yes, man. So this, this is, going from this is uh, the DBA album cover. He uh, green clouds into a green. This is the DBA album cover, cover he did. Gradually, gradually. And then into that glade there will be bridges and human stuff. 
it's, it's hinted at now, but it isn't, it isn't dominant yet. It will become more so. Have you hidden things in your paintings? <laughs> um, well, I, I'm constantly amazed that people can find things I've hidden that I didn't even know were there. And once they discovered them, it's, I have to acknowledge, wow, that was there. So I guess the answer to that is, I don't sit down and plan to hide things in the painting. But Sorry, I'm only up for four minutes. It seems that they get there anyway. Do you use masking fluid with watercolour? Um, in all my life, I believe I have tried it a couple of times. I can't recall when and where. So, it's something I'm interested in, but I've never done it to the point where I think, yes, I'll keep a bottle of masking fluid handy. So I might have some. It might be turned to solid rubber by now. <laughs> I don't know. But it's, it, I certainly haven't used any in the last decade or half decade. So yes, I've used it, I've tried it. I didn't find it, I didn't find that it didn't work, it sort of worked. It didn't turn out ideal for me. Arthur Dean likes to paint the watercolor because he says once acrylic dries, it dries, but once watercolor dries, you can just add water and it's Have ready to go. Have you ever again. disliked or destroyed a finished painting? No, but I have disliked and destroyed a half-finished painting um, or abandoned one. So um, when I'm painting in acrylics, I don't have to worry about it because no matter how badly wrong it goes, in the end, I can put it right. Even if it means painting 90% of the painting again, or even all of it, I can get it right. But when I was doing watercolours and drawings, it was very precise and very delicate. I did abandon one or two, but not when they were nearly finished, when they were barely started. So when they were nearly finished, if I thought, well, that's wrong, I would figure out how to fix it. Because it was usually possible to fix. You know, you have a lot of options about how to fix things. It's weird. I'm not on the camera. Oh, I am. You, you are. I, yeah, I thought we'd had enough of the painting. We wanted to see you. <laughs> I could actually, yeah, wait a minute, I should have done this at the beginning. <laughs> that makes it easier, does it? Yeah. Oh, well, we should have done oh, Watercolor instead of acrylic, because watercolor so can be wet, what can oh, yeah. be, you can just have water and it's uh, oh, ready to, to go again, unlike acrylic, which dries overnight. Oh, okay. So you can return to a painting okay. after multiple days. What I'm doing, activity. well, chatting, is I'm thinking what I'm going to do next, which is what I'm doing half the time with the painting. And when I'm thinking what I'm going to do next, it's something might excite me and think, oh, that's working well. I'd like to extend that or de develop that. Or sometimes I'm thinking, whoops, I need to subdue or subtract that bit. But right now I'm just looking just for the next area that requires attention. Are any of your paintings in a museum? Um, uh, I have, uh, I can't remember how many pieces, but I have a piece of furniture and I think 11 album covers and a bunch of drawings in permanent collections. The permanent collections of prints, drawings and paintings at the Victoria and Albert Museum, and I have a piece of furniture in the 
permanent on the try and buy. I actually just want to buy. I want to try and buy a permanent display. And during like an online auction, a Roger Dean original, but uh, I didn't have. I, I was quickly out there. Vienna, which was essentially the most furniture museum. It's real high dollar stuff. You know? have, like the master's um, original work. It's one of my precious urchin chairs in their permanent collection. Um, paintings. I've exhibited in lots of museums and I have letters from a number asking for pieces. Um, the V&A wrote me a letter. Just uh, check us out. It originated yeah, it is the in the 1920s at the Bauhaus. A little dabbing and there for the leaves, you know, isn't that so cool? When I was a student, I would be, um, I couldn't believe we were expected to design these boxes for human beings. And I remember that, I've said this before, so apologies to those of you who've heard it before, but when I asked my tutors, Let's get this focus back on me. All right, cool. Okay. So, anyways, I think I might have to. I might end the stream here soon a bit. Any chat messages? Are gas prices finally going down? I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. And maybe if gas prices don't go down, they'll have me do a GERD fart into the car tank. And it'll, the car will be so scared, it'll be constantly trying to run away from it or something. I don't know. Drive. Cars don't run. And I get distracted. The Warriors pit cross time limit is running out here. This is a bit of a, this is going to sound like a bit of a heretic. My favorite Yes album is Talk. I know a lot of people hate that album. But I just love it. Some gorgeous tunes on there. Like an Endless Dream is just, oh, gorgeous. I played that for one of my brothers and he just thought it was too long and boring. And of course, someone who didn't have quite the ear for music like I do couldn't. Truly appreciate talk. Oh, damn, I said really pompous. Like, it's not really pompous talking like that. Mm, yes, I wouldn't expect you to get a complicated album by a group that makes complex music like Yes. It's like by the 90125 line the band most fans are making all the pop beer, or pop kind of tracks. Here we go. Let's pick and check. Okay, so, anyways, I think we're going. I think uh, we're going to end the stream here, just because I, uh, I, I want because uh, I'm going to. I got I got plans tonight. And I really want to get a 
I got some stuff I need to do before I can act on those plans. So I think I'll uh, I'll, I'll stream. I'll, I'll see you guys later at a, another time and place. Um, yeah, and yeah, that's basically it. See. You.